August 28, 2005. In a showdown that was years in the making, heavyweight champion Fedor Emelianenko would finally defend his belt against Croatian striker Mirko Krokop. This was possibly the most anticipated fight in the history of MMA. It faced the two top heavyweights in the world against each other in the pride ring. This is must-see TV. Listen to the sold-out crowd at the Saitama Super Arena. Here we go. The challenger, Mirko Krokop, is 36-2, 225 pounds, 13-2-2 in pride. Agakura, 182 cents, 106 kilos. Emilian Hyodo! Jitter Emelianenko, the defending champion, 28, 6 feet tall, 233 pounds, undefeated at 10 and 0 in Pride Fighting Championships. This is Pride Heavyweight Titan. Whoa, look at this, no stare down, much respect for each other. Two of the nicest people you will ever meet. But now, they're going to turn it around. They're going to make a 180, and they're going to turn into an angry person. But control, very important. Mirko Krokop says defeat frightens him more than Emelianenko does. While Emelianenko says he respects Krokop, and there you see the mutual respect, and this title fight is underway. Right away, Fedor is pressing the action, and it's real smart because he doesn't let Krokop in getting into his game. Very smart. Yep, he definitely wants to lock him up. You see? Krokop able to push away, and we know all about Krokop's tremendous takedown defense. Emelianenko able to block, check that kick, boss. <laughs> yeah, he did. But you know what, Emelianenko, when he fought Antonio Nogueira, he had that body slam that he did all the time. So his upper body movement is real good, too, his upper body wrestling. Krokop is oh so quick on his feet. So Emilianenko Fedor going there for a left hook to the body, which is the liver. Whoa! And there you see the proficient striker, Krokop, going right down the middle of the guard with the left hand. Constantly pressing the action. Does give Krokop time to stand still. Saw Emilianenko deliver half-hearted left kick, but already cognizant of the fact that Krokop was immediately going to counter with that left hand. One little mistake, it's all it needs. And again, Krokop sending that message with that left straight through the guard, boss. Yep. And we know that a million ankle striking technique a little wider with his strikes, and we talked about that, boss, that Krokop might be able to exploit that because he is the professional striker. Yes, he is. You know, Emilianenko has great power, though. He only needs to connect, but Krokop is so good at evading it. Yep. Moving backwards, staying out of the reach. He's doing a perfect job here. He cannot go into the corner. It's so important. Once you get locked up, <laughs> nice. And again, the great counter to that left kick. Beautiful. Oh, and again. another. You hear it over here. Always dealt with bad intentions. Mirko Krokop. But Fyodor Emelianenko again. Doing it. Oh, and a plenty of snap. But Emelianenko catches him with the left that bounces Krokop off the roof. Yeah, that was a good counter there. But what a lot of snap to the kick delivered by Krokop. But met immediately by a great left hand by Emelianenko. And now he has him on the rope box. Ho, ho. This is crazy. He is a master in game plans. And Fedor Emelianenko. Emelianenko delivers a knee to boot. And wow, Emelianenko damaging Krokop. And now with that high left, almost has Krokop. Oh. And he almost falls out of the ring. And wow, what drama we are seeing here in the first round of this Pride World Heavyweight title fight. As Krokop pushed Emelianenko out of the ring. Another straight left by Krokop. 
Yeah, the thing is with Fedor, he's pressing the action, but the bad thing about that is he can't walk on that left straight of Krokov. But surprisingly, perhaps, Bosk, Emelianenko has damaged Krokop with those strikes, and now Krokop going with the kicks and the combinations upstairs. Oh, oh nice, nice hit rocks here. Krokop. What a right straight. I'm telling you, the people here, everybody, they're <laughs> sitting on at the ringside, edges of their seats. All eyes on the center of the ring where they belong. We saw Krokop get knocked up by Kevin Randleman, but he's absorbed tremendous shots here from Fyodor Emelianenko so far, boss. Yep. Whoa, what? And another left straight countered right away here by Fyodor. Counter by Emelianenko. Misses with that right hand. Ooh, man, it's so close. Nice left here from Krokop now. And now he presses the action, boss. But then he's oh. with the right by Emelianenko. High left kick by Krokop and falls down. Oh. And there's a takedown by Emelianenko. As it really was Krokop losing his balance, boss. But Emelianenko exploiting the situation now. It's the danger zone for Krokop. Oh, yes, it is. He needs to get out of this. This is bad for Krokop. And someone is bleeding, boss. Emelianenko Fedor, it looks like. Through the, I think from the nose. From the high kick, I think, maybe. Is it? I don't know. Let me see. Is that? And everybody's waiting. What is it? Yeah, it's a cut, oh. right? High on the head. It's not a big cut, I think. Yes. Oh, left. Wow, I think it's that. that. Left. Right on the nose. Man. Oh. Look at this action. Two of the greatest heavyweights in MMA thus far delivering the goods, boss. <laughs> yeah, who could have asked for more? That was the kick, you see? Yes. It's right on that spot. And let's hope that we do not revisit what we had happen at the 2004 heavyweight tournament final. Yes, they're going to allow him to continue. Well, actually, it is the nose boss. I thought it was over the eye, but it was from... Is it over the eye as well? Yes, it's over the eye as well. Okay, Both so there's two cuts, but minor in nature at this juncture. If there's a cut above your right eye, you know it's from Krokop's left kick. Yes. <laughs> but the ground and pout. Let's see now how much Fabrizio Verdun's BJJ help has helped Mirko Krokop because... This is where Fyodor Emelianenko is at his most lethal. Back into the guard. <laughs> when we talked to Verdun, he said that Krokop is probably at a blue belt level now in terms of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. A good one, he said. Yes. <laughs> Here broke up neutralizing the hands, the arms actually of Fedor Emelianenko. Krokop worked with Brazilian wrestler Rodrigo Artolero as well, and he praised Krokop on his strength in his ever-evolving ground game. There you see again, bloodied face of Emelianenko, and they're going to check him out one more time. Emelianenko, who never really divulges much in terms of his training information, did uh, let fans and the media know that uh, at the end of July, they trained in the Caucasus Mountains, Mount Elbrus, which led us to believe high altitude training, boss, that uh, he probably anticipated this might go a long time. And uh, because they, they trained in Mount Elbrus, and right now from the information we're gathering, it doesn't appear to be a severe cut. They're just wanting to wipe away the blood. And as we see the, another great shot of this incredible crowd, Yuji Shibata, the head official, calling them back to the center of the ring. Yes. Same position. Same position. We're getting a little bit of everything here in the first round of the Pride World Heavyweight title fight between champion Emelianenko and challenger Krokop. Ball scene, Provo Shaw. 
He's got to kick him away. Fader needs to That's drill what those to do. hammers down. Rokop up kicking there. Oh, but coming down with the right hand was Emelianenko. Now it's Krokop trying to neutralize the arms, but you can see that Emelianenko has that left arm free, now able to really free both arms, boss. And again, this could be dangerous for Krokop. Looking for yep. the leg there, and he has a sample background, boss. Mm. It will be a smart thing to do, though. Yeah, go for legs. He's training with a Brazilian jiu-jitsu oh. guy. I don't know if he does legs. Oh, no, no south. This. south, and this could be very dangerous with those knees to the head. Final three minutes of the opening round. Oh, the mount position. Is he going to get oh. a no? <laughs> This is great. Look at this again, holding the arms, closing the distance. And Mirko Krokop looking up at the referee. I don't necessarily know why, but yeah. he looked like he was wanting something from him. Here's, here's prototypical Emelianenko, just wanting to rain down those bombs. But look at it. That's an active guard by Krokop, doing pretty well, boss. He did really good. But Emelianenko in the close guard, trying to look to improve his position. Now, but look at Prokop keeping him in close, boss. Yeah, it's very important. We say it many times, the longer a strike travels, the more power it has. So you want to close the distance all the time, especially with Fedor. And having said that, look who's attempting to try to load up that long range <laughs> yeah. bomb. But back down now, and look at Krokop. Fans wondered what his ground game was like. Well, his defense seems to be doing okay, boss, because he's really avoided the full brunt of this Emelianenko attack. But there was a right hand. Yeah, this is, it's wild. You know that if somebody's gonna connect like 100%, what, 80% is gonna be over. But who's gonna be the one? Is it going the distance? You know, we don't know any. Stand up again. Coco holding the wrists. He doesn't want to have that right hand. Is there is there that full power to those shots by Emilian Enko Bots? Let's not forget. He did break the hand against Toshiaki uh, Siyoshi Kosaka. Um, the hand they did the x-rays and they said that it was it was healed, but again, is there maybe some tentativeness on the part of the champion because of the fact that he injured that right hand? You know, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. He's he's throwing them, but yeah, but you see, uh, Mirko, is, he's concentrating to neutralize that arm all yes. the time. And look at this. Look at the busy bicycling, bicycle kicks to defend. And a great job by Krokop from the bottom, boss. Beautiful. Nobody could have asked for more. No. A memorable opening round for the Pride World Heavyweight Championship. We've seen the stand-up. We've seen the ground game. We've seen mixed martial arts at its best. 10 seconds. Yep, that's gonna be round number two. I asked for it, and I received it. Great. Oh. And the fans are applauding the efforts of the world heavyweight champion Emelianenko and the challenger Mirko Krokop. It appears Krokop is a little wobbly, though, going back to the corner. I mean, he expended a lot of energy having the uh, very powerful heavyweight champion on top of us, but again, Kudos to his defense, and what did you think of that opening 10-minute round from both perspectives? Both perspectives, they both are doing phenomenal. Oh, look at that liver kick there. Right away followed up with the left straight, but he didn't have his foot on the ground, so there was no real power behind it. Nice left straight again. We saw that one before. Goes in for the kill now here. Nope. Look at that you know, action. Boss, when you take a look at the replays and seeing what we saw in the opening 10 minutes, and again, thankfully, we are not the judges, but Emelianenko, as we see some good shots from the challenger, but Emelianenko was able to surprise Krokop as well with some exchanges standing up, and he did control the ground action. Would you give the slight edge to the champion in that opening 10 minutes? You know what? Now you said it like that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, Fedor is... is, is a master in shifting his weight on the right uh, the right places and that's why Mirko is tired right now he just lays on him and he knows exactly lays on his belly and he pushes himself up so his lungs get emptied 
Having said that, though, Krokop is nowhere near out of this matchup. I oh, mean, no, come on. Knowing, that has to give him confidence, <laughs> knowing that he was able to defend so well in the ground, on the ground, knowing how dangerous Emelianenko is in that area. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in round number two. And uh, again, the Pride World Heavyweight Championship at stake. And there you see the champion. And again, boss, let's take a look one more time at some of the action from the opening 10 minutes. Oh, and there they stopped it. And great analysis as always, Mr. <laughs> Wood. That Thank was wild. You. Woo! All right, the marked up face of the heavyweight <laughs> champion showing the scars, Krokop as well. These two are warriors through and through. And here we go. Oh, look at that. Look at this is right. A kick and a couple of devastating body shots by Emelianenko taking it to Mirko Krokop. You know, the corner from Suedo, Emelianenko is real good because he attacks the body. They saw Mirko was breathing and they said, go for the body. I bet you. We said it in the opening. Is he a man or a machine? He's known as the Russian experiment. And I'll tell you, this guy just continues to morph and improve. And there is a liver shot by Kroka. Uh, one back. They're trading. Look at this. Uh, that, uh, he's got a short haircut already. That just uh, gave him another close shape. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh. Barely avoids that counter. Looking for the body lock was Krokop, but now it just has to force it away. It looks like right now, Emelianenko has the power advantage over Krokop, boss, in that he's able to control the clinch and the, the fighting in close. Yep. Uh, Mirko has to move away from the ropes. This is very important. And Fedor is doing a great job. Well, no, Krokop looks like he has the body lock now. and That's true. Going for the takedown. Emelianenko looks for the front. Mac comes oh, back to the left. And that was a good left. It looked like it stunned Krokop a little bit. Oh, okay, come on. Oh. Not a good sign here. Now Krokop now appears to be fatiguing just a bit, boss. Emelianenko having trouble even getting that kick out. I mean, these two are battling. Look at that. It is a war, but you can see Krokop backing up now, and now he's trying to get his feet back underneath him. I'm telling you, because Fedor is pressing the action oh, all the time, nice that is the reason that Krokop is getting tired. It's very difficult to fight a person like that. It takes away the whole game plan. Oh, he misses with the left, and Krokop comes back. Goes for the clinch. A couple of knees. Tries another throw, but Krokop. doesn't work. Yeah, Krokop able to avoid that. Nice! Left but countered immediately by Emelianenko. And just when you think Krokop is seeing a ray of sunshine, Emelianenko comes back with that dark cloud in the form of his counterpunching. Yep, and he's closing the distance non-stop. Neutralizing the punches and the kicks of Krokop. Whoa, inside leg trip here. Vandalay Silva is also a master in that. Last two minutes of round number two. And the referee is going to restart them in the center of the ring. The same position in the close to guard of Mirko Krokop. Obviously, the pace has slowed in round number two, and really, did we expect them to go at it like we did in that memorable opening 10 minutes? Now the Croatian contingent, you may be able to hear them in the background. Cheering on Mirko Krokop while other fans are cheering on the champion, and really, it's almost split down the middle, although Mirko thought he might have the advantage here in Japan, boss, because he's fought here longer than the champion, but let's face it, Fyra Emelianenko has been a very popular heavyweight champion, a dominant one at that. Oh, yes, he is. 
Oh, do not let him go to the side mount. I want to say, oh, 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 he tried for the goal. Now go for the mount, but didn't work. And back into the guard. Yeah, and he delivered some hammer fist, but you saw that Krokop was trying to grab that right arm, but just slipped out. Final 60 seconds of the second round. Could we be treated to round number three, boss? It looks like yes. But in this fight, you really can't tell. And I don't think anyone would complain. Melianenko now trying to pass the guard again, but one thing Krokop has been successful at is the defense using his legs. His legs are a deadly weapon standing, and they seem to be serving them well on the ground as well. Into the final 10 seconds of the second round. So now we pretty much can say that yes, it's going to go to round number three. Yeah, and I definitely think that the the match is in favor of the defending Pride World Heavyweight Champion. So during the interval, the challenger Miracle Krokop is going to have to recharge his batteries, boss, and then just come out and let everything hang out because uh, if he wants to realize his dreams of becoming World Heavyweight Champion, he's going to have to pull out all the stops. Look at this action. There he went for throwing that left hook, yep. And look at the reaction of Krokop here, look. He stands still for a second. Yeah, he's fatiguing. And let's face it, he's got <laughs> it the like most he... dangerous man in the heavyweight division, the champion, all over him. And that's got to be very tiring, boss, when you, you know, and frustrating as well, when you're on the bottom, not used to being in that position, and not able to get back to where you are more comfortable. Whoa, man. But you can see both of them are showing effects of what has been a war thus far. And what does Fedor Emelianenko now get whispered in his ear, in his super corner, so to say? Because every time you see him fight, he has a different game plan. Wow. This game plan was perfect for him. I know it's funny, he says, unlike most fighters, he doesn't even engage in any special type of training or preparation, depending upon his opponent. He's just uh, adjusts his fighting style according to the flow of the fight and his opponent's actions. And uh, he really is one of the more intelligent fighters involved in this sport, boss. You know, uh, Mirko Krokop in Croatia, his home, in fact, boss, has a, a you know, state-of-the-art gym, while Emelianenko, the heavyweight champion, has a very Spartan <laughs> facility. <laughs> so it's, you know, two schools of thought, two different styles, if you will, but, I mean, when you put them together, this is what you get. A memorable battle for the World Heavyweight Championship. The third and final round is upon us. Started right away with the right low kick. The outside leg of Fedor Emelianenko, but now, oh, nice right straight to the body. is getting the better of these stand-up exchanges. And again, a body shot there. Double underhook here from Mirko. Oh, look at this. Who is going to get it? Fedor, back in the guard. Emelianenko goes back in the guard. You're right, boss. And is he just too strong for Mirko Krokop, boss? The high altitude training helped him for sure. Going in, Krokop said that he felt no one had a clear advantage in this fight. He thought that it would come down to physical conditioning, a careless mistake, the intangibles. We talked a little bit about the training that Emelianenko did, boss, and there you see, raining down some left hands. He even went to Holland, worked with some of the great strikers there. While Krokop, you know, he always keeps his training in a shroud of secrecy, working, of course, with Fabricio Verdun. He brought in Mike Kyle, he brought in Ar Artillero, and there's that liver, or that uh, middle kick by Emelianenko. Spleen. Yes. Right kick to the spleen. Yeah. 
Referee's calling for action. So that means they better move, otherwise they're going to be back on their feet. But I have a feeling that the audience likes that. Mm -hmm. Although for Emelianenko, he has to be pretty pleased with the way things are going thus far. Look at this. Now these series of hammer fists. Beautiful escape here to yeah. the side mount. Just a machine. I mean, Fyodor Emelianenko is just incredible to watch, boss. Yes, he is. You see, you notice he's pretty much not hitting with his right hand, actually. Bring up a good point. Yes, a very good point. Final three minutes now. You know, in any kind of fight, conditioning is the best weapon. As you see, Emelianenko continue to just smother Krokop. Mirko thought that uh, mental stability would determine the winner of this fight, but really, right now, it is simply the fact that Emelianenko... Oh, wait a minute now. With 2 minutes, 26 seconds left, referee Yuji Shimada has issued a yellow card to Mirko Krokop. And here we go, boss. Both fighters standing. Mirko misses with the left in the clinch. A knee by Emilian Engel looking for the takedown. And He's back to it. the ground they go. This is not good for Mirko Krokop. Very good for Fedor. Not for Krokop. Fedor Emilian Engel, a textbook game plan against the Croatian sensation Mirko Krokop. We saw him go to war two and a half times, if you will, with Antonio Rodrigo Noguera. I mean, is there anyone in the world who can take away the Pride World Heavyweight Championship? Mirko Krokop has a minute and 30 seconds to do so. If Mirko doesn't take it, it's going to be very difficult to find somebody who can. Emelianenko doing a great job of just keeping Mirko Krokop in his world, boss. Not allowing Krokop to get on track. And let's face it, even when they were standing, Mirko Krokop did not look like the Krokop we are accustomed to seeing because Emelianenko was able to take him out of that zone by, by outstriking him. Outstriking him because he was pushing the action. He was pressing the action. You know, and if you... If you walking backwards all the time, how are you going to fire that back leg? All right, it's the final 60 seconds. If it's going to happen, another yellow card for Krokop. And maybe the tank is running on empty for Mirko Krokop. His opportunity for landing the Pride World Heavyweight Championship seems to be slipping away. A liver kick, but you see him fall against the ropes. Fyodor Emelianenko. Nice left there, but it didn't have the power behind it that it normally has. Fedor is pressing. Non-stop. Another kick. Krokop against the ropes. Fifteen seconds. And Krokop is on the ground. Yep. Emelianenko's in the open guard. And, and you know, the end. watching Krokop fall like that boss, perhaps a metaphor for watching his championship dreams come crashing down as well. Yep. I think so too. I think and the there you see did it. a tremendous show of respect. Fyodor Emelianenko helping Mirko Krokop to his feet. But I do believe Mirko Krokop's dreams of becoming champion have turned into a nightmare tonight in the form of the Russian experiment, Fyodor Emelianenko. Oh, and well, look at this. Yep, Fedor did a great job. It looked like here a triangle attempt, but it's Fedor we're talking about. And his fight against Nogueira, he escaped every single uh, submission attempt. So I don't think that Mirko could submit him right here. Maybe surprise him, but uh, no, that was not in there. Beautiful side mount. It was a grueling matchup, and you have to give credit to where it is due. Both fighters giving it all they got. I mean, you could see the signs. There is Emelianenko's wife, who is 
got to be, well, I mean, you never know what a spouse feels like this, boss. She looks at her husband, banged up like that. Let's go to the judge's decision. Let's hear the announcer and find out who emerges victorious. Judge Miyake. He remains the most dominant champion in mixed martial arts and undefeated at that, improving to 11 and 0. Fyodor Emelianenko, the Russian experiment. And again, Boss Rune, is he man or machine? He is pride world heavyweight champion, that's for sure, but there you have it.